In this tutorial, we will be walking you through the onboarding steps to help you get started with CatchApp. First, go to the CatchApp website and once there, click on free trial. Here we have the sign up page. Enter your details. Then after this, enter a password. You're required to have eight characters minimum, one higher case and one digit for a secure password. Your first and last name and then your account name. Your account name is what appears on your booking link. This is automatically set as your first and last name, but you can customize this here. Once you have filled out all the fields, simply click proceed. You will now need to verify your account. What you do is you go to your email, that you have given earlier to the form and you will have received an email which looks like this. Click on the orange button and this will verify your account. It's as simple as that. Now let's click proceed and log in to catch up. Once you have logged in, you will enter the onboarding process, which is three short steps. Connecting your calendar is the first, and it will help you benefit from the two-way calendar sync. Here are the integrated calendars which you can choose from. We have Google, Microsoft, and Apple calendars supporting two-way sync, which maps your availability according to your availability in your native calendar. I'm connecting my Google calendar here. Just go through the steps and authorize the connection. And that's it. Your availability and bookings will now be synchronized. Go through a similar process if you were connecting video conferencing tools. Find out more in a later video. The final step of the onboarding is creating your first event type. This is where the magic happens, so let's set up your first event type. To create event types for specific appointments, you will need to fill out the details on this page, the first of which being appointment name, which is the title of each appointment in this event type. You can then select the location, which there are a variety of locations including video calls, phone calls and face-to-face -face locations, and even custom locations if needed. Let's choose a face-to-face -face location in this case. The next field is appointment notes. These will appear on the booking page, email reminders, and even the calendar invites. This is usually an agenda or guideline for the attendee around, about the appointment. Now we move on to the fields which will determine the availability for this type of appointment. The first of these fields is appointment duration, which allows you to determine how long appointments booked through this event type will be. As you can see, we have preset times, or you can choose a fully custom time length. The next thing to do is set the availability of the appointment, so when you will be available to be booked. You can apply the same rules for every day, or you can use custom availability to choose different availabilities for this event type on different days. I will select this event type to be Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. till 11.30, and then a break, and then 1.30 till 4. The final step in controlling your availability for this event type are my availability and scheduling buffers controls. With my availability, I can choose how far into the future this event type is offered, which will mean that for as many days as is displayed here, the event type will keep refreshing into the future and allow the people who have access to your page to book you for that event type in that time period. Scheduling buffers allows you to limit the amount of time it takes for people to be able to book you. Scheduling buffers allows you to push back the next available slot for when people will be able to book you. This means you can stop people booking you a day or an hour in advance. 
This allows you to prepare for the meeting and do as you wish in the meantime. We can also switch on SMS, text reminders for your attendees, as well as add an additional questions about the booking on the booking page. You can switch on payments with the Stripe integration and even allow multiple bookings if you're running group sessions. And there we are, we crafted a bespoke appointment effortlessly in less than five minutes. Once you have created an event type, it will appear on your event types page. From here, you can view the page and copy the link and even go back and edit this event type again. Let's view this event type and make a test booking. Here you'll see the booking page that we've created from this event type. As you can see, the details that we shared on the page are now coming across to the booking page and you're able to see the availability for this event type. By selecting a date and a time, you will then be directed to fill in your details to confirm the appointment. Again, you fill in your details here and the appointment will be confirmed. If you're requesting SMS reminders, you will also request a mobile number from the individual. And if you are asking any qualifying questions, you will also be asking them to answer that. Once this booking has been confirmed, both parties will receive a calendar invite and a confirmation email for the appointment. You will also see here that when you create an event type, you receive an email with the links to the event type and helpful tips to your email. So you can find your event types in the email or in the catch up booking platform. We recommend you save the links somewhere where you can access them quickly as well. Here we can see the booking confirmation email. All the details that you have confirmed when you're making the event types are also reiterated here. And you can add this to your calendar also. If we look at the calendar invite, we will see that the details of the appointment are also found there. And if we look at it from the attendee side, the details are very similar, but with some restricted views also. Before your appointment, you will receive a reminder emails and so will your attendees. Again, the information is all reiterated. You can create as many event types as you would like. So as you can see, we're gonna make another quick one here. Be sure to make the event type, multiple event types to meet all of your needs. Thank you for listening.